Welcome. Uh, I know that you're watching this air view because you love WayneGMadden.com. I know you love that website name. Uh, thanks to the great folks at Easy as Pie uh, for filming this interview. It's always a pleasure to be involved with the uh, the guys at Easy as Pie. And we're here sitting, of course, with a man it's always an absolute pleasure to be sitting next to, which is Kyle Hughes. Kyle, oh, oh, very it kind. is. Oh, do you know what? You, you, sir, you are a legend. That is just, that's, that's a fact. We're going to start the interview by saying that. I would like to think that I'll get there, you know? But to think so, great. Well, uh, for those to give some context, you obviously uh, played with, uh, with Ron Bumblefethal yep. uh, in Trillions in Newcastle at the start of November, and then you did some other gigs with him. Um, how have you been since the gigs? How have we been since we've seen you last? Good. Yeah? Yeah, I mean, there's been some things mentioned by Ron that I'm very humbled by, but yes. in general, just practicing, you know, still want to up my game. And yeah. you know, I've got some things coming up next year, and you know, if if, if all of it comes off, I've got to be ready. So yeah, just absolutely. practicing and keep up my game. You know, I don't want to get complacent and <laughs> and stay put. You know, indeed. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? Uh, how'd you get into drumming? Tell us a little bit about the the early years. Tell us about Kyle. Newcastle. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Newcastle always. Um, I started drumming as a hobby when I was six. Okay. It was just a hobby. I you know, it was just a little drum kit in the house something I just thought yeah I'm just gonna I'll try that I was yeah, actually yeah. originally an actor and that's what kind of I was going on Nickelodeon I made a film and stuff like that oh, nice. um, it was at my Nana's retirement party where my dad had basically my dad was in bands yes. and he saw that I took an interest in drumming and so he decided you know what it is I'm gonna pick up bass again mm -hmm. and play to see if that'll spark something with me you know to see if I go oh, I want to play live and that's what my dad done, and on his first gig coming back into the scene, mm -hmm. he got me up at nine years old, and we played, I think it was Walking By Myself by Gary Moore, like a blues track. Yeah. And that's what kind of started the whole performing live, and then at 11, I was getting up as a guest with my dad's band, it was called We Three Colonels, and then the drummer decided, oh, I want to be a keyboard player. And yeah. they said, well, we don't have a drummer, who are we going to get? Yeah. And sure enough, I was only like you said, about 11 or 12 probably at this point, and my dad said, why don't we give Kyle a shot? And sure enough, since then, I was just performing live, doing the set, and then yeah, yeah. two years on from that, or three years on from that, I joined Twister, and that's kind of where the whole yes. thing began, you know, that, that yeah, career course. part thing, you know. So, I mean, tell us, uh, I, I must ask, like, Nickelodeon, That you, you didn't have, like, a bit part in Good Burger or something? No, to be honest, <laughs> <laughs> it was the Kids' Choice Awards, actually. It was right, just, yeah, oh, cool. it was um, just one of them, like, clips that come up, and then you've got all the little bubbles and stuff that float yes. in front of it. You know? Oh, wow. There's something crazy like that, but I actually made, it was a film I made at 11 years old, it hasn't, apparently it has been released in, like, America and stuff. Yes. Um, but it wasn't, like, a... You know, I'm no Leonardo DiCaprio or anything <laughs> like that. You know, it was just a small film, but it was an experience. And, yes. you know, I still stay in touch with the directors now. But yeah, yeah. it got to a point where I thought, I just want to, I want to go down a different route, you know, and I want to play rock music and yeah, yeah. be a rock star, if you like, you know, and that's kind of still is the dream. And yeah. as childish as it may sound, I've always no. believed in that, you know. You know, you, you, you have to have a passion in life. This is it. Yeah. Um, and obviously that passion led you to Twister. Mm -hmm. um, and tell us a little bit about Twister. Where did th where did that go? How did you how did you find playing with those guys? What kind of style th were they? To be honest, I was all into my my metal music. I still am, you know. Yes. That's like where my heart is the the rock and metal side of things. And when I got, it was actually my dad who received the call from an agent saying mm -hmm. there's a band called Twister um, looking for a drummer. I didn't. I only found this out after I joined that they already had a drummer. <laughs> right. But there was. I was the last person in line to, to try out and said, "Listen, if this guy doesn't work, then you've got the gig." And sure enough, I turned up the last guy and got the gig. You know. So, wow. Um, fair play. At fifteen, and um, yeah, it was. You know, it was just a pop rock band doing all Art and Monkeys covers and stuff. And as time went on, you know, the more we got to write and you know we got used to each other. My drumming was very metal you know it was kind of my playing was in a very metal style and but it worked to be honest and that's what I think made the band different at the time you know it was although my playing was very intense it did fit you know yeah. with that rock pop you know sound that they had and did, did that kind of like did that would create some like you know George Harrison and the Beatles they talk about the early days when he was too young to be in the clubs and they had yeah. to sneak him in and lie about his age was yeah. that kind of like you know in some venues, yeah, yes. Yeah, a majority yeah, of the time, yeah. no. I mean, sure. you know, like, 
original venues and stuff. You know, oh, there's yeah, bands yeah. in general that are, that were younger than yes. you know younger yes. than me. You know, and they yeah, were yeah. all that age. But um, some venues are a little bit dodgy about it. You know, they were sure, a little bit like sure. don't want him coming in, and then I'd have to change my age and say I was eighteen. And some yeah. venues found out what my age was and wouldn't let me go back. So right, you know, some were some were a bit strict about it, but a, yeah. a majority of the venues were fine, to be honest. Yeah. And uh, by the time I turned sixteen, it was it was all it was all cool to be honest. By then, and so from from March twenty fifteen, you were playing with Twister, and they were opening for Ron Bumble for Thal, um, mm-hmm. who, who of course until very recently was one of the main guitarists in Guns and Roses, and you were you were playing with uh, with Ron, and he had then kind of come across and said, right, well. I won't have a band for my show, so obviously Twister will be the band, yeah. and that kind of started a musical bromance between between you and Ron. Yeah, I yeah. mean, s- sort of. If you know, yeah. like, a, yeah, yeah, a bro- no, you write a bromance. <laughs> yeah, I thought you said a romance. <laughs> well, no, no, I wasn't. I wasn't implying there was there was anything. You know, uh, yeah. I well, I said to him uh, during our interview about a bromance, and he kind of. And I said, I, I'm not meaning to offend your wife. And he was like, no, there's no offense taken. I love Kyle. Uh, you know, yeah. and you know, well, and that very cool, calm demeanor. Yeah, a saying. bromance and, you know, whatever it may be. It's, <laughs> yes. you know, I, like you said, he's a, like, to be honest with you, he's one of the nicest guys yeah. in the business, to be honest, you know. Sure, there's sure. A, you know, he's so down to earth. He's just normal, just, and very humble as well, you know. Yes. Obviously, he's an incredible guitar player. But uh, the fact that he's, I said we've kept in touch since 2015. That Twister gig is, yeah. to be honest, it was surreal for me. It still is. Sometimes I think to myself, I'm like, this guy is, the, he's at the, the top of the tree, you know, and he's yeah. he still finds time to to stay in touch, you know, and sure. he gets back to me straight away. And yeah, I'm very honoured to to just know the guy. To be honest with you, he's a really great person, you know. And so uh, you went and uh, played some shows. You played a show with him in London. And then he kind of got in touch with you about the tour. Um, how did you kind of come to terms with sort of learning the material and, and drumming on certain things? And how sort of flexible is that? Because you, you were in a couple of bands at different stages and obviously learning lots of different material. And then how does it go from there to focusing on maybe one artist's material in terms of the, the, the style and quality? I think, to be honest, like for me, I've always dealt with pressure quite well you yes. know if I'm playing with one band one weekend and then I have to do a bumblefoot set the week after I, yes although it's pressure I like pressure you know yeah. I like being under pressure because it means I end up I make sure that I get the job done sure and yeah I mean for me it's just quite normal I've been under them I've been in that type of scenario before you know where I've had to learn this set and that set and to be honest it's yes. just I've done it that many times now it's just it's like nature you know I just yeah. do it and the only difference this time round with Ron's set was some songs even he hasn't, pl- some he hadn't played live before, yes. like Argentina yes. and Higher from of course. the Little Brothers Watching album, and some of them he hadn't played <clears throat> like in in so many years. You know, like yeah. Can't Play the Blues. That's yeah, yeah, an old song that he hadn't played. You know, so it was that was different. But you know, like with me performing with Ron the first time, I make sure that I do my homework and I'm thorough with the amount of detail that I yeah. go into, you yeah. know, I make sure I learn the song backwards and I always check with Ron, I go, is this how you're gonna play it live or is this how you're gonna do it? And mm-hmm. I always like to check and because I do that, it just makes my job a lot easier and Ron's job, hopefully, <laughs> a lot yeah. easier when it turns up, you know? No, totally, totally. So yeah, that's how I do things. And so obviously when you arrived at, at Trillions in Newcastle, uh, you were aware a little bit before that the good people at Easy as Pie, who are filming this of interview, uh, they were they were recording the gig. Yeah. Uh, is the first time you've ever had a gig professionally recorded? Um, God, I'm trying to think. Mm. Um, it's sort of not like that, to yes. be honest. Not like that. I think, you know, getting people's phones out and being on the big screen, yeah. that's different to be in you know on 4k and, and, and on yeah. 4k yeah. and stuff um so yeah I've ne- that's never happened before but it i didn't feel under pressure or anything, no sure you know, i think i, I mean when when you sat and watched that footage um how did you kind of feel looking at the footage of yourself in retrospect of the gig afterwards what kind of it's always different because at the time i mean <laughs> you know i couldn't hear anything at the time apart yeah. from just this 
this monitor just booming, you know, the bass drum and stuff. It was just really loud up there. Yeah. But then listening back, you know, obviously I always like to be very critical, you know, because I don't like to think, oh, I played amazing there because it's never the case, you know. There's always something you can improve on. And, yeah, I mean, to be honest, it's the guys did a fantastic job, if I'm, mm -hmm. if I'm honest. The, all the shots, all the angles, which is fantastic. And the sound was really good. And, mm -hmm. yeah, I surprised myself, you know. I think it was yes. in some areas I was thinking, oh, I don't know if I quite nailed that. And, I was quite pleasantly surprised by yes. just the gig in general, but you know, I never think that my plane's flawless because there's always something to mm -hmm. improve on. You know, as always. What's uh, what's what's it like, sort of sitting from the best, as they say, the the you know cliche, the best seat in the house. Yeah. What's it like, kind of you being the only person who's looking out on the audience, uh, in in that respect. It, to be honest, it, it's weird that you say it's a good question because I've never really thought of it much. Right. You know, I just kind of do it, but. You know, I just, what I notice, it's always, I feel like, you know, I feel like I'm leading the band, you know, I feel yes. like I'm leading it. Obviously, yeah. I know Ron's leading it the whole time. Sure. But it's always good to, to sit back and just see what's going on. If there's a technical issue, you know, I can always make note of that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when people are turning around, they usually turn around to the drummer to go, where am I at in this song or something? Yeah, and yeah. Usually, that's why, when I go back to what I said before, why I learn stuff. So, you know, I just learn my stuff really well because... I need to be on the ball, you know, for mm -hmm. if someone does take a left turn and they go, oh, where am I at? And mm -hmm. they look around at me, at least I've got control of that. You know, mm -hmm. I always like to, especially with Ron doing his thing, he hasn't got time to turn around and go, it's this chord, you know, or it's this part of the song. Yeah, they usually yeah. turn to me and, you know, because I learn my stuff that well, I try to keep it, I try to take care of that in every no, band, sure. to be yeah, honest, yeah. you know. But yeah, it's, it's great, you know, looking out the audience when it's big crowds, it's, it's, it's pretty cool, you know? Yeah, and I like to be relaxed yeah. and everything, you know? I don't like to get too carried away with it. No, of course. <laughs> and so, I mean, w when you when you get to that sort of, uh, that stage, what what kind of inspires you? What what stuff have you listened to? Is there any particular drumming style or influence that you take direction from? Or who do you kind of bring in to hone your own sort of unique sound? To be honest, it's... Um, I like to emulate a lot of players, you know, yes. like... Some guys that Bumfoot's played with, like Mike Portnoy, yes, uh, Corns drummer Ray Luzia, yes, yeah. at the moment like, a recent influence of mine. You know, yeah, I'm watching sure. a lot of him to try and gain some inspiration, and even the classical guys like Steve Gadd and your yeah. R and B drummers, you know, yeah. like Usher's drummer Aaron Spears, and all of them guys. You know, I kind of take bits of each drummer and try to in, like fuse it with what I'm doing. You know, yeah. to create my own style, and yeah, it is hard to do. But, you know, from people that have worked with me, you know, some say that I've got my own style. But even now, like I said before, I never like to just sit and be like, oh, I'm great. You know, I, yeah. I never think that I always want to keep improving and keep taking bits of every drummer that I see. You know, even if it's not, they're not my favorite drummer, they'll always have something that I haven't got. So I just like to, to really just take bits of everyone, every, you know, every drummer that I've seen, like Benny Greb and Thomas Lang going from the technical monster that he is yes. to Benny Greb who's you know, just straight up he's just his groove is incredible and it's taking bits of all of that the technical stuff and the groove side of things mm. and it helps me you know I said I, I'm always learning so it's you know I'm constantly trying to work on my style and try and get this unique style going you know and so w you know uh, w what's what's happening with you where are you where are you heading to what, what kind of what are you up to at the moment uh, I've got obviously the Guns to Roses gig coming up yes. on Saturday with Gav and stuff. Yeah. But um, as far as the New Year, um, there might be a show with Bumblefoot coming up, a one-off yeah. show, or maybe two two shows. But uh, yes. I can't say where they're at, and sure, sure. we're currently trying to see if it's possible. Yeah. You know, Stuart yeah. from Coyotes involved with that, and he's going to try his best to nail it down in the next few weeks, hopefully. Yeah. Um, which I'm doing some some recordings for him. He's releasing a solo album or. An orig he's in the original band and I'm going to be recording some drums for that um, but one of the main things for next year which is happening in January I'm going with M Michael McChrystal from yes. the Tides of Pantang or yeah. Mickey Crystal yeah. as well <laughs> uh, I'm going to Nam in LA so yeah that yeah, should be yeah. interesting and I just want to thank Istanbul Mehmet for making it possible to be honest those guys I've been with them since I was 15 Yes. and at first it was just an Inspire program that's now turned into a, a full endorsement, you know, which yeah. I'm very grateful for. And to be honest, it's because of them that I'm going. So, you know, big thanks to them. 
And I'm going to be hooking up with a fellow artist at Istanbul. Or actually, two of them. Vinny Apice and uh, one of Ron's friends, Carmine Apice. Right. I'm going to be hooking up with him and... You know, hopefully, you know, he might yeah, look at yeah. me and think, who's this guy? But, <laughs> you know, because he's super cool and all that stuff. But, yeah, I think I'm going to be having a chat with him and, you know, hanging out with him and stuff like that. And I think me and Mick are actually attending a show in Anaheim. Uh, yeah. At the, I think it's the City National Grove okay. Theatre. So that should be really cool. I can't cool. say what show it is, but we're going to be attending that. Right, okay. And, yeah, it's, like you said, there's a Bumblefoot show that might happen in February. We're currently going to see if that can yeah, happen. sure, sure. And yeah, a couple of I think I mentioned it in, when we were doing our Nova Radio stuff. Yes. Um, I'm working with a guy in Holland that's a friend of Bumblefoot called Mark Meesters. Ah, oh, yes, of course. A band yeah, yeah. called Scarscon, I think it is. Mm -hmm. Obviously, all based in Holland. He found out about me, checked my videos out, and he's going to be releasing his solo album and wants me to fly out to to Holland, Germany, yes, France, Belgium, and you know he had a number one in Poland and stuff, so he wants to get out there and. Of course, well, I think, you know, like the Screen Skulls stuff with Aurora Dawn, that's, yeah. I was on the phone to Aurora last night, that's still going to happen. But a lot of these things, like, I announce them all on my Facebook page and then I get a lot of messages saying, so when's it happening? And yeah, I think in yeah. this day and age, it's about getting, even if it's just demos and stuff, it's about getting into a standard where you can present them and people are just instantly blown away yes. rather than presenting yes. something that's kind of okay mm -hmm. um, because then it doesn't stand out you know I think that's why all these things are taking time but I can assure everyone that's taking an interest it they will it will happen next year and it cool. will be to a good standard you know no excellent well I uh, I look forward to uh, look forward to, to obviously hearing more about your your interactions with guns to roses and uh, and, and and hearing more about that uh, so on on callus.com what can people find uh, it's actually kyleusedrummer.co.uk. Ah, uh, now. Gonna get that out there. There we there. go, now. Straight up. Um, yeah, I mean, that's my personal website. That's where, I mean, I have my blog on there and stuff, so it's constantly getting updated. Um, it's going through a little bit of a, a change at the moment. You know, I'm trying to get it all sort of just, it's it's kind of had the same layout for the at least like the last two years or something now. So I want to get that updated and um, get control of it myself. So um, I can just keep updating it for all the people that might want to go on it. Mm -hmm. But um, hey. uh, well, recent news. I just posted that uh, posted this yesterday. I'm now an endorsee for Natal Drums and Regal Tip Sticks in America. Um, lucky enough, Regal Tip are actually have invited me to hang out at, at their booth at Nam as well. You know, so I'm going to be going over with Istanbul mm -hmm. and with Regal Tip now. And I'm, of course, no doubt I'll know the guys at Natal and probably say hi over there. Um, so yeah, I'm endorsing obviously Charchi Pedo Pedals, which are a Polish pedal company, all custom pedals, um, Istanbul, Natal Drums, and Regal Tip so far, um, all great companies, I've been with Istanbul for a very long time now, um, and yeah, I mean, that's to be honest, the main aim now is to get out as a session drum, I'm doing a lot of sessions for different artists, um, all over Europe and in America, and yeah, if you, you know, if you want to reach out, I'm always here, feel free to go on the website www.kylehughesdrummer.co.uk or um, just contact me at kylehughesdrums at gmail.com I'm always around and yeah if you want to do that feel free it's cool if not don't <laughs> <laughs> nice nice that's the way to do it yeah I think that was yeah yeah s smooth uh, before before I let you go though I must ask you this this beautiful artwork on your arm yeah. I know you're getting some of this added to mm -hmm. so perhaps even by the time this interview is out you'll have more but I must ask like how this this artwork is exquisite where how do you get this done and what what kind of inspired you to why these designs uh, to be honest a mate of mine Glenn James Patterson he's where I go to get all my tattoos done yeah. and he's done all my chests and stuff like that really sure sure and um, are you asked like where I get the ideas from yeah from yeah yeah um, well to be honest the weird thing was I just wanted a globe because obviously the the idea is to travel the world and stuff yeah. like that um, if I could pull that up and basically it's weird I got this from going from England to America before I even right booked a flight to America and next thing you know it kind of <laughs> happened you know yeah 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 uh, the skull and stuff like that it's all just very much stuff that I wanted um, yes but obviously this the idea on this arm you won't be able to say it's like this I want to go to LA and get a tattoo in LA and there's places like Russia I want to go to oh, and right, okay, the idea okay. is to get them all over the world you know like tattoos from all over the world on this arm only yeah this is like kind of an arm I can just oh I see okay so like like backpacking stamps or something like on an old yeah. on an old rucksack yeah so cool that's the idea yeah, for yeah, this yeah. and obviously the chest is just 
like um, the Magpies for Newcastle United, you know, yes. keeps me at home all the time, you know. Yeah. I'll not forget where I'm from, obviously. No, but well, it's but that's a it. good reminder of yeah. where I come from, you know. So, yeah, I'll probably get what I'm getting done next week. I'll be covered by the next time you see me, man. But, uh, yeah, that's that's my thought behind it. You know, I want to get something that means something to me. But this arm is, like I said, I'm going to LA. I don't know if I'll get time to get a tattoo done. Yes. In January, but I will obviously be going back at some oh, point, totally, so I'll yeah, probably yeah. get it done. Over you, there. Uh, you, you think that uh, when you say the, uh, when the big fan of the Magpies, do you reckon that they'll uh, do you reckon they'll win the championship this year? Get back to the Premiership? I, I'll be honest. I stopped watching football when England got knocked out the World Cup, which people oh, are going to be going crazy no, with no, me now. No, but uh, yeah, I think they'll. Uh, from what I've heard and what I've yeah, seen, yeah. the odd kick of the football have you, know? you have you been to have you uh, do, do you have the time to go to any games or have you uh, I used to go to a lot like um, yeah. I used to just go and watch them out a private box that we had you know and uh, that was cool um, but I never really get time to be That's honest it. I mean this is it. This is it. when people say you know what do you do in your spare time it's for me it literally is just music 24-7 you know for me which sometimes can drive you a little bit insane if I'm honest yeah well that's but it but for me I think like a Going back to when, what I first said with the whole being a rock star thing, yeah, you know, I'm nowhere near where I want to be. You know, I want to keep yeah. pushing on. I want to keep advancing in my career, and I think with hard work, that's the only way that it comes to you. You know, it yeah, doesn't yeah. just happen overnight, and that's why I think music's so intense at the moment with me because you know I just want to keep getting there until I'm at that level that I want to be be yeah. at. You know, like Guns and Roses or that's the ACDC, it. whatever yeah, it may yeah, be. You know, absolutely. that's the dream and it doesn't happen overnight and it, it certainly doesn't just come to you sitting playing on games you know what I mean that's I like true. To, yeah, to work yeah. hard and yeah. that's the aim and that's where I'm going you know? that's it that's hopefully it hopefully so anyways cool so, yeah. Kyle um, no it's been a pleasure man thank you always so much always a pleasure man. no thank that's you. it thank you thank you very yeah. much no problem cool. take care no worries